Ah, yes. Hello again. It's the 1st of February 2015 and this video is going to be about court cards. And a lot of people get stuck with court cards and not quite sure how to deal with them. So I want to look at and give you some ideas on what they mean and how the reader can deal regularly with a court card when it comes up. Because if you've ever turned a court card, which can be a king, a queen, a knight, or a page, so you turn the card and you think, oh no, you know, or you've had some kind of variation of reaction like that, then this video is for you, because I'm going to show you how to become comfortable with court cards. So the next time you turn a court card, you're going to think, okay, it's a court card, rather than, I wish I hadn't turned that card. And the thing is, cards representing people ought not to be too bad. They not, ought not to be too difficult. But I, th I think a lot of people don't like them because we think we ought to be able to turn the court card and give the person's name, date of birth, blood type, last time I said what they had for breakfast that morning, and give all sorts of details. And that if we can't do that, if we can't know the name and be sure that this card refers to this particular individual, then we're not good readers or we're imposters or we're not that capable or we've got an awful lot to learn. And I don't think this is true because um, this, this kind of seeing the person, like you turn a court card and you see the person in your mind's eye and being able to describe that person might seem pretty desirable, but actually it's quite limiting. And I'll go into that in a minute. Plus the fact that the details you give can just be wrong, right? So you can say the person's name is Bill, but actually it's Peter. Or you can say they're an engineer, but actually they're a high school teacher. So you can give details and you think you're right, but they end up being wrong. And one general point I think is important to remember is that a card isn't just one thing, or it doesn't have just one meaning, right? Or it isn't just a single entity. And that applies to any card. But when you turn a court card and think, this is a bill, that's narrowing things down. And I think that's a mistake. So if you turn a court card, let's say you turn the queen of whatever swords, and you say, this person's name is Mary. That's kind of a narrow focus and isn't really covering much ground by saying to the person the question, this is Mary, because you're leaving a lot unsaid that could be useful for the questioner. The other thing is, if you, if you give a name for the, for the court card, um, you, you can make the questioner blind to other events or possible future situations because you say you, you this person's you're going to meet Mary right so the person later all they're doing is looking to see who's who's Mary is this Mary is this the Mary I was told about right so they, they don't notice other people they ignore useful and valuable opportunities as well because they're so focused on meeting Mary so in this way giving the questioner a name and that seems so impressive. It can mean that you're giving the questioner tunnel vision, right? They're looking and they're seeing straight ahead. So that's one one point. The other thing is that the, a court card can be referring to more than one person, right? So it can represent the questioner. Um, and this can be... We, we should remember that the question, it can be talking about the questioner at some point in their life, right? It doesn't have to be what they're like right now at the time of the reading. So it can be referring to what they were like or a situation they dealt with in the past or the, now in the present or in the future, depending on what spread you use and where the card comes up. So the reader can help the questioner by describing, let's say, the personality of the court card or the strengths and weaknesses of that particular court card. And that means that if you describe the strengths, then the question can go off um, knowing what they're good at or knowing what comes easily to them and what they can depend, the qualities and the abilities they can depend upon, right, because it's a strength. Or maybe if you talk about the weaknesses of the particular card, then the question can go off understanding where they're weak. So what they need to work on or the kind of of behavior that is not going to automatically 
automatically produce good results or they shouldn't expect good results from that kind of activity or that kind of behavior without doing any work because it's a weakness rather than a strength. Or at the same time, the, the court card could show some new part of the personality that they have to learn about. Or it could even be a reminder to the questioner of what they used to be like that they've forgotten. Right? So when, when we think of a court card describing a person, it can be now, in the past, or in the future. It can be something that's clear in the, me the memory, or it could be something that's been forgotten about. So there are all these different possibilities. And I think the reader does well to um, talk about different um, ways of looking at the court card. So that's thinking that the court card represents a questioner, but it can also be somebody else that the questioner either already knows or is going to meet in the future. And how do you know? Readers want to know, how do I know? Is it somebody the person knows or somebody they're going to meet or is it the questioner? And I think the point is you, the reader, don't have to know because it can be both or many variations of that, of those possibilities. So if you, the reader, stick with this idea that this court card represents a single person, you can be cutting the questioner off from various paths that they might travel or closing their eyes to possibilities. At the same time, the court card can represent a condition or a situation that they're going to have to deal with. Right. So the king, for instance, can be a situation that revolves around who's going to make the decision, right? or who's going to be in charge because it's a king. Or who's going to have the final say in what's going to be done? It's a king. Or if it's a page that comes up, pages represent young people. So they can show inexperience. So, or the page can represent a situation, um, where there's uncertainty, um, about how to proceed or the best way to handle the situation. Maybe because it's new to the person. Um, or it's one that they haven't had to deal with before. So you can be old and wise, but if you're suddenly presented with a situation you haven't experienced before, you're like a page in that situation because it's new and you're young and inexperienced. So th those are different situations that can be covered by court cards. And the thing is, in an actual reading, it can be that the court card can refer to one of them. Right, it may simply, it may be dealing with the, or referring to the questioner, or it can be the questioner and somebody they're going to meet. So it's two possibilities. Or maybe it's going to be the questioner and a condition, or somebody else and a condition. So you've got three possible scenarios. I think it's most useful for the questioner if the reader can describe all three scenarios and then leave it up to the questioner to recognize which one or more the card is referring to when it comes up. And the thing is, at that point, the question, when it does come up, the question will have had some forewarning about what to expect or what's going to happen so they can make more of the situation. And I think this is a, this part, this is part of the value of a reading that it's not just predicting what's going to happen, but helping the questioner to be more effective dealing with situations that life brings them, as well as enabling the questioner to live more fully with the kind of situations that come up. So when you turn a court card, you might, you, the reader, might see something like, okay, here we've got the King of Cups. So if this represents you, then blah, 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 right? Whereas if it's referring to somebody else, then watch out for this kind of behavior, right? Or this is the kind of thing to... Um, to expect, or don't expect them to automatically do this. Or if it represents a situation, then you can be learning about about whatever the king represents, so you should do this or try that, or don't expect that. And if the reader does this, describing all three scenarios, it's not that you're, you're not being specific or you're not telling the truth. What you're doing is you're preparing the questioner to make the most of whatever situation is going to arise or has arisen in the past and giving them a greater ability to 
to deal effectively with whatever is going to happen. So that's something about court cards and what they represent. But the reader wants to be able to know what the, what to say when a particular card comes up. So what do you do so that your mind doesn't go blank and you've got something to say? So let me give an example with a king. And what you do is, I've got this piece of paper. What you do is you get a piece of paper and you write the word king, right, in the middle of the piece of paper. And then you take two minutes and you come up with various thoughts or ideas about what the king can represent. Right, so I've got here um, uh, in charge. So the, I, I wrote in charge because the king can be, can represent being in charge. I also wrote Prince Charles waiting because Prince Charles, he was born in 1948 and he was the future king of England, but he's now 67, I think. And he's been waiting for more than 65 years to become king. Right, so maybe the king can represent the need for patience, or maybe the king is going to be, or an important part of the king can be, don't just take things for granted, but spend the time wisely preparing for a future situation. I also wrote down King of Pop, because Michael Jackson, known as the King of Pop, so he was very capable, good songwriter, choreographer, dancer, and all the rest of it. So the king can represent somebody who is really good at what they do and gives orders, for instance. So the king can represent somebody who's good at giving orders or the, the, the need to learn how to give orders effectively. And I also, I also wrote down yes, man, because um, if you're in a position of authority, there can be a problem if people just tell you what they think you want to hear and they're not honest with you. So I've got maybe five, six points that I'm going to then spend some time thinking about and developing. So if we take gives orders, right, that's one point about the king. So maybe what we're going to say is the king represents somebody who is good, the king upright is somebody who is good at giving orders. And this can mean it's somebody who can get their point across or somebody who can get people to cooperate and do good work. Right, so if the king comes up, let's say you want to know about a future job and the king comes up, this can mean your boss, represented by the king, the authority figure, is somebody you ought to listen to. Right, because he's a king. Somebody who knows what they're talking about. Maybe somebody skilled and knowledgeable and expert. That's all useful information for the questioner if the king comes up in the future. Or maybe we've got the king reverse. I know people, some people don't use reverse cards, but I think you, you lose an awful lot if you don't. So let's say a king, a, a king, the king is reversed. So this is somebody who's not so good at giving orders. Maybe they think yelling and screaming and trying to rule by fear is the way to go. But, with the king reverse, it's not. It's not going to work. Or it's going to backfire. Or this king reverse can be somebody who does not get the best out of other people. Um, or may maybe the king gives orders and people just agree because they're just going to agree anyway. But are they going to act as if they mean it, but they don't really? Right? So the king reverse can be somebody that you can safely ignore. Right, because they, they think they're authoritative, but they're not actually, and people don't take them that seriously. So, if the king reverse comes up to do with a new job, you, the reader, have got certain things you can point out about the, the future boss. Or maybe you're going to point out that if you, the questioner, find yourself in a position of authority later, because the king is reversed, take it easy. And don't assume that just because you're the boss, everybody's automatically going to obey you, right? So that's, for instance, point one about giving orders. So I can look at in charge, and then I can do make come up with some things to say about the king upright is good at being in charge, the king reverse is not good at being in charge. And then you describe being in charge in different ways. So that when... 
a king comes up, or let's say a king comes up in a reading, you're not trying to remember everything you ever thought about the king upright and reversed, but you relax and you just talk naturally about what, what this king could represent. And you're going to find that you automatically talk sensibly in, and in a meaningful way that the questioner can relate to. So, that's for a king. Then you write a pe get a piece of paper and you write queen and you do the same thing. Write down a few things that could relate to a queen and then take some time to think about each one individually. And then you do the same for the page and same for the knight. So, in this way, you end up practicing on your own but you've got useful things. You've got a much better understanding of what court cards represent. So you're going to be able to talk sensibly about any court card that comes up in a reading. Um, that's it. When I was putting this together, I, I've got two other points that I want to make about, about court cards. And one is about and I'm going to do this in, in the next video, in a separate video, rather than try and cover too much all at the same time. And it's going to be about how we're better off to forget about trying to relate court cards to signs of the zodiac. And also, I think it's going to be useful for readers if they've got some or a basic idea about why we need other people in our lives. So you can pass on some useful tips to the questioner, which will make relationships with other people more fulfilling and better and more understandable. And I think, I think I th this is the next video. And I think there's going to be enough in, the, in those two points to, to make a 10, 15 minute video. So I'll do that next Sunday, the 8th of February. Um, in the meantime, um, if you have comments or questions, leave a comment below or email me and um, we'll take it from there. So thanks very much for watching and have a good week. Okay, bye-bye.